Today we're going to go over a topic, um, shepherd versus the hireling. Will you abandon Christ's sheep? And this topic, um, I'm not going to say that we, I was going to say that we actually forgot, but what I'm going to rephrase and say, we probably need a reminder of why we were called into this, into this walk, especially you men. Especially you men that hold the torch, that bear the burdens of the different sanctuaries out there, you soldiers, officers, um, quote unquote, you know, leaders, but we're going to use the term shepherd tonight. Let's open up with 2 Timothy 3, 16. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, and verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So all the scriptures in this Bible, they were God is God is was inspired to give it to us that we may have something tangible that are those are the instructions on how we operate in the various um, positions that he places in. Um go to Second Corinthians chapter four. Start at verse 1. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, and verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry. So it says, therefore, seeing we are given a ministry. Read. As we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. So we must put away the dishonest um, things that we come up with in our minds, the way we handle the ministry the way we orchestrate ourselves and apply ourselves to the ministry that is at hand. Read. Not walking in craftiness. Come on. Nor handling the word of God deceitful. Not deceitfully. handling this truth deceitfully. Why? Because there is a great purpose that has been placed in our hands. Read. But by manifestation of the truth, Condemning ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Uh, it not, it's commending ourselves. What's going on, Naaman? Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So we got to put in the work because we are given a ministry that we must what? Do it without craftiness, not dishonesty. Um, so let's go to... Um, let me open up with Matthew 9, 36. The book of Matthew, chapter 9, and verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. So that's what, we're, that's what we are going to be dealing with tonight, sheep. Without a shepherd. Um, and why shepherds are important. Why shepherds are important to us. I'm going to look up. Let's look up the word shepherd. Pull it up on Google. Shepherd. Let's pull up the word shepherd on Google. You with me, IT? All right, all right. All right, read that, Nayeen. Shepherd, a person who tends and rears sheep. Similar word, herdsman, herdswoman, shepherd boy. All right, look at the similar words. Similar words. Uh, no, um, go down where it says number two. Number two, guide or direct in a particular direction. To we steer, to lead, s s drop down. Similar Th word, Come on. guide, conduct, usher, convoy, marshal, steer, herd, lead, take. 
escort a All company. Right, I want you to go down a little bit on the page. Let me see something if it if it comes up. Keep going. All right, let me I think I put it inside. Oh yeah, right there. See uh, dictionary.com. All right, let's read that. Shepherd, one, a person who herds, tends, and guards sheep. Two, a person who protects, guides, or watches over a person or group of people. See that? A group of people. Synonyms, defender, keeper, guardian, protector. All right, these are the characteristics of a shepherd. Um, I'm going to read what I got here. Um, let me read what I got here. In the King James Virgin Bible, uh, cause we, I'm going to touch on the hireling briefly. In the King James Virgin Bible, a hireling refers to someone who is hired to perform a task, often for monetary compensation, without genuine care or commitment to the work. And that's something that we're going to touch on because oftentimes, like I said, we probably forgot why we were called into the truth. It is to do some work. It is to watch over the sheep to watch over the flock, to protect them, to take care of them. So what happens as we, as we go along in this truth, and oftentimes when we get these purple shirts, I'm going to say we forget that there's a job at hand. We start to come up with excuses like, you know, I'm sick. Uh, we start to treat the, the work as like it's a part-time job. We come in, we clock in, we clock out. Sometimes we don't show up. Sometimes we want to take a leave of absence. Sometimes we want to go on vacation. And we start to treat it as if we are hirelings and not shepherds. We start to make a lot of excuses on why not to do the work. So it says, um, without genuine care or commitment to the work, especially in the context of tending sheep. The term is used metaphorically in John 10. Let's get that. John 10, verse 12. Contrasting, contrasting the dedication of a true shepherd with the lack of care shown by a hireling. The Read that. John the 10. Of, the book of John 10. Verse 12. And verse 12. But he that is in hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. So it says, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. Now, the Lord uses sheep in a metaphorical sense. So we're going to give some images of what the wolves are out there. Bring up those images, um, the churches. Give me some church images. Because it says that the wolf have scattered the sheep. When you look at how our people are indoctrinated, they are scattered in their minds. Their minds have been scattered by these different places that they have entered in. They have been taught lies, so God's sheep are scattered in different denominations. Protestant, Baptist, Catholic, they are scattered sheep with no shepherd. Bring up um, politics, something with politics, Republican, Democrat. These are the different things that have scattered our sheep. Our people believe in... In um, government, they believe that these nations can probably save them. Give me um, Lamentations 4. Is that 4? 4.17. Let's get that. 
So、Before、these are the different things that have destroyed God's sheep. The Politics. Book of, the book of Lamentation, chapter 4, and verse 17. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that cannot save us. So these nations cannot save us.、Um, give me、um, Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood, put that up there. Bishop has been going over this extensively. But these are the things that have destroyed God's sheep. Our people have turned to these resources, not knowing that they are, dis- they are being destroyed by them. You got me? Planned Parenthood. So this is Planned Parenthood. All, when you look at the, those images, that's the sheep. That's the flock of God that has been destroyed. It's being destroyed.、Um, so let's go back to the scriptures. Read John 10 again. The book of John, chapter 10, and verse 12. 12. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and、so、fleeth. That's the job of a hireling. The job of a hireling, they're not committed to this. They leave the sheep, knowing that the sheep needs a shepherd. Read. And, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he's in hireling and careth not for the sheep. And careth not for the sheep. All right, so that's the characteristics of a hireling. But that's not what the Lord intended for us to be. Read Matthew 9 36 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 9, and verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad, as sheep having no shepherd. As sheep having no shepherd. Numbers 27 16. The book of Numbers. So we're going to go back. We're going to go back on the f- books of Moses to see what the Lord intended for us as leaders. Read. Numbers chapter 27 and verse 16. Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. And the Lord said he wants men set over the congregation. That's why you see leadership set men in place to govern different administrations in the various sanctuaries that we have. Read. Which may go out before them, and which may go in before them, and which may lead them out. And may do what? Lead them out. And lead them out, read. And which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. The congregation of God cannot be led without shepherds. We must take the, the job of a shepherd seriously because God has what? Sheep, they need to be led. First、um, Peter 5 and 2. The book of First Peter, chapter 5 and verse 2. First Peter, Why chapter 5. We、five. need to be shepherds and not hirelings. Read. The book of First Peter, chapter 5 and verse 2. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint. Not by constraint. But willingly. That means we have to have a willing mind to do this. That means we cannot treat it as, you know, second to, all, to the things we have in our life. If you look at your job, your job is servitude. This truth, that's your job. That's what you must put as priority. That's what you must put in the forefront of your mind that. You must come here and what? Lead the sheep. Tend to the sheep. Take care of the sheep. Guide them. Protect them. See what the needs are of the sheep. Read it again. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. But willingly, read. Not for filthy lucre. Not trying to get paid, read. But of a ready mind. But of a ready mind. Meaning that you must have a mind ready and willing 
to take care of the sheep. Um, for those videos that I got, play that first video. Let me, is it the first video? Let me look at it again. Uh, no, play video. I need to play the video number one. Now this video is going to show you the, it's going to show you a hireling, the, the, what a hireling does when he has sheep. Cue it up, when you guys got cue it up, let's play it, let's hear it. Make sure the volume is up also. If you're awake with us, maybe you're having some trouble sleeping, mm -hmm. maybe you've even tried counting sheep. Probably not working so well. Nah. You're still watching us, sorry. Um, we're here to help though. Take a look at this and just count away. Um, one, two, two three, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, Jack's now passed out. How high are we supposed to count? 1,300. Oh, that's a lot of sheep. So On the move. 1,300 Now they made their sheep. way into a city. And now, now you look at, you see the egg, the sheep just wandering around the road. Let's see what was going on. Let's see what this hireling did. Spain earlier this week why you might ask well we understand their shepherd actually <laughs> fell asleep <laughs> he said the shepherd did what he was counting play it back no <laughs> police apparently just found the guy shepherd actually <laughs> fell asleep <laughs> do you think he was counting them police apparently just found the guy no and um, no we, we look at that, but we have to look at it from a spiritual sense that if we do the work and we are not, what, focused, we are not diligent, we are falling asleep, the sheep in here, out there, they will wander away. They will wander around because a sheep, sheep in general, they need a shepherd to constantly guide them. I'm going to send you another video link talking about the care of the sheep. Uh, let me pull it up real, real quick. Now, this, this, this video at the end, the guy went all, you know, Christianity, so I don't want you to play the whole thing, but the first part of the clip is very important because, mind you, these nations understand what it means to care for sheep. I mean, the stuff that he brings out is on point. So it's just that our people, we don't take it serious about the level of care that we must give to God's sheep. Play that video. I just put it in the group. It's titled, Sheep Need a Shepherd. Now, remember the previous video was a hireling. That's the characteristics of a hireling. Just leave the sheep to wander off. Wander off and be killed. Let me know when you got it queued up. Make sure the volume is up. Sheep are really wonderful creatures. And they really teach us a lot about ourselves. You know, the Bible is full of illustrations and comparisons. All right, so pause Compar pause right there. Now you notice we're gonna we're not gonna look at it at, through carnal eyes, but we're gonna look at it through spiritual eyes. Ephesians five twenty six. Remember in Peter's let's read Peter's again. Book of Peter, chapter 5, and verse 2. Feed the flock of God, which is among you. So watch. He is feeding it. The first thing is water, Ephesians 5, 26. Book of Ephesians. Ephesians 5, 26. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, and verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. So we have to feed them with the word, clean water. Uh, we went over that last Sabbath. Expli Bishop explained the fountain. We will wash with the fountain, which is the scriptures, the word of God. Play. Caring people to sheep and our needs to the needs of sheep. You know, the greatest need of sheep is a good shepherd. Now, that's what he said. Someone what sheep? The greatest thing they need is a good shepherd. 
It says, sheep need a good shepherd. And we have an example of a good shepherd is Christ. And we're going to read it later. But the first thing he pointed out is sheep need a good shepherd. Work play. One that will care for them and love them. You know, there's so many needs that sheep have. Now, listen to what he says. There's so protected. many. Hey, pause. There are many needs of sheep. When you look at a congregation, when they come into the body, there are many needs that they need. There's many things that have to be provided to them. As far as understanding the word, then they have their the fleshly needs. Some might need food, housing, counseling. There's many needs for the sh that the sheep need. If we abandon them as men, we are not good shepherds. We are hirelings. If we say in our mind we're gonna go home and sleep, and we're tired, you have you are abandoning the sheep. If you don't show up, the sheep are waiting for us men to be here to let them in, to feed them, to feed them with the word of God, to listen to their concerns, to listen to their ailments. Play. He's going to say, it. play. From dangers both inside and out. It says from dangers, dangers from both inside and out. Let's look at some dangers. Let's. Bring up some of those images I told you all about. Um, bring up some of those dangers. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Let's bring them up. This is dangers. Look. Our people are depressed. Alcoholics. What are dangers we got out there? Depression, suicidal thoughts, living without a purpose. These are dangers. Come on. Incarceration, imprisonment. These are the dangers out there. Drugs, cigarettes, single parent homes, not knowing if you're coming or going. These are mental dangers. What else we got? Uh, sure, give me some pictures of our young sisters out there, um, the way they dress. And as they're bringing that up, give me Luke 417. Give me some pictures of our young men, effeminate state, our young men as players, rappers. Come on. Live. The book of Luke. 4.17. Chapter 4 and verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the 18. book of... 18. 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And that's it what we have to do. We are, we are preaching the gospel to the poor. The poor in spirit. They lack the knowledge of God. Read. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To heal the broken minds. Those, you got those images? You can start back from the beginning with the, with the alcohol. Let's roll it back from the beginning. Because I want, I want this to be understood. Um, the purpose of a shepherd. When you watch that video, the gentleman said, there's many dangers inside and outside. Read again, Luke 4, to heal what? Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Come on. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. This is our people. Their minds are broken. Their minds are broken, so they turn to what? Alcohol. Depression sets in. Not knowing if they're going or coming. Oppression is upon them. They turn to drugs. Come on. To preach deliverance to the captives. We are preaching deliverance to those that are captive. Our sisters are captive in this system. They're depending on welfare. Their, their bodies are being abused. Single parent homes. No fathers in place. 
this is what you're, you're looking at a broken people. How can you just abandon the sheep? How can you go home and sleep and not show up to take care of your people? Come on. And recovering of sight to the blind. And to recover the sight of the blind. Where's those other images? This, look, they may look like they're awake, but they are blind. They are blind to who they are. They are blind to their nationality. They lack purpose. These are broken hearts. These are lost sheep. Come on. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Them that are bruised, read. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's it? Yes, sir. All right, let's go back to where go back to that video. Our people are broken. You cannot, you cannot ignore that. You cannot ignore it. either you are a hireling or you're going to be a shepherd. Come on. Let's play that video again. Cue it up. Predators and from um, other dangers. Now, now you, I want you to take note of this. Look how the sheep knows that he's being taken care of, if it's a he or a she. But it knows that when it has a good shepherd, it knows it's being fed. It knows that it's being taken care of because a sheep needs a good shepherd. Come on. Their needs are provided by a good and loving shepherd. It says the needs of a sheep are provided by a good and loving shepherd. The job of a shepherd is a daunting task. It is not something that you see captains and deacons like they're just having this grandioso experience, it takes a lot of mental thought. You have to plan and know what you are doing in order to take care of God's sheep. And it's a, something that you need all hands on deck to take care of sheep. Come on, play. Just like we as people need a good shepherd, the Bible tells us that Jesus is the good shepherd, uh, and he loves and cares for Dial back a minute. There's a part that he mentioned. Go back a few. It told, he said something about a sheep will go out there and eat poisonous things. Go back a bit. Oh, uh, By the water. Yeah, go back to the water scene. We were right there. You can play from there. Sheep is a good shepherd. Someone that will care for them and love them. You know, there's so many needs that sheep have to be protected from dangers both inside and out. Dangers from wolves and coyotes, bears, um, large predators, and even more so, internal parasites. It says, it says internal parasites. There's parasites in the body that you have to protect the sheep from. Some people come into the body to what? Destroy the sheep. So even in the body, leadership has to be what? Looking for danger. Counseling the sheep. Don't go here. Don't do that. So the sheep themselves must know that the shepherds are in the body and are looking out for their well-being. Play. And um, other internal problems are even more deadly to sheep than large predators. And a good shepherd keeps an eye on these things. A what? A good sheep shepherd. A nature that hold is. Hold on. A good shepherd keeps an eye on those things. The things that are in the body. The things that can harm the sheep. Even I've, I've seen where captains are planning things, and it's like, no, we can't go there because there's water. The young sheep in our body, they might drown, or, you know, we can't go to this event. They might get hurt. A lot of thought goes into what? Taking care of the sheep. And for you all to be hirelings, you know, that, that's not a position that you want to be in. We are not supposed to be hirelings.
play. Often seen as dumb or foolish because they, whatever sheep is in the lead, they will follow them into all kinds of trouble. You see what it says? It says sheep are often dumb and foolish. It says sheep are often dumb and foolish. And we have we been foolish as a nation? Yes. We have followed all kind of dumb doctrines. To this day, we still follow dumb doctrines. Christmas is a dumb doctrine. Easter is a dumb doctrine. Birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day. Thanks, Thanksgiving is a dumb doctrine. But yet, we as sheep, we follow it. But we are... We must now be what? Shepherds and bring the sheep out of those what? Dumb doctrines. Play on. Sheep always think the grass is greener on the other side of the Here fence. Here it says, and sheep often think the grass is greener on the other side. Some sheep say, you know what? I'm going to pick up myself and go to another city. And don't tell the shepherd that it's over you. Because Why? You think the grass is greener in another city. And then when you get to that city, you decide to call your shepherd and say, start crying. Oh, man, this grass actually is sour. And I am struggling in this, in this city that I went to on my own. Not knowing that the shepherd was there to protect you from that. Play on. That gets them into trouble. They eat poisonous plants. It says sheep will eat poisonous plants. This, 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 this is us. The Lord is showing us why he, he, he metaphorically characterizes us as sheep. We are sheep in the total sense of the when you look at the totality of an actual animal. Because we will go out there and eat what? Things that are not meant for us to eat. That's why the Lord gave us a what? Dietary law. Because we are what? Dumb sheep. We need instructions. Don't eat pork. Don't eat crab, shrimp, and lobster sheep. I have given you a diet. But as sheep, we decide to eat poisonous plants. It's crazy. Play on. At times and and need to be nursed back to health. And need to be what? <laughs> nursed back to health. So you have to come into a sanctuary, a place of healing, to heal your broken mind. So you can learn God's laws and know what to eat, how to cleanse that body that he has given us. Play on. If you can, they need to be fed and watered regularly. So Fence sheep in. need to be fed and watered on a constant basis. Are we talking about physical feed or physical water? No, the word of God. That means the sanctuaries has to be what? Constantly open, constantly filled with shepherds so that they can come in and be fed. All right? Um, drop that. Now, we're talking about sheep. I want to show you, give me Acts 2.21. Acts 2.21. I think it's Acts 2. Acts, tw Acts 2, 21? That's what yeah, let me look at it. Book of Acts, chapter 2, and verse 41. Then they that gladly received the word were baptized. And the same day, they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now, I want, are we going to use sheep to show you what 3,000 souls can look like? Play video. Was that number... Let me look at it. Video number two. Let 
Video number two. Now remember, we're using sheep as a metaphor for our souls. This is what? 3,000, I don't even know if it's 3,000, but this is a large farm with sheep. Now, hit, hit, hit pause. I, I want you to look, hit play again real quick and then space bar. Let it play a little bit. All right, hit pause now. Now, if you look, this is a lot of sheep, and they're being taken care of. Imagine this is 3,000 souls, and the amount of manpower, the amount of care, the amount of attention. No one person can do this. No one person can take care of 3,000 sheep. You definitely cannot have a hireling among you. You have to have committed people. Now, I'm going to tell you, sheep, you have to watch over them constantly. Like the first video we saw, the shepherd went asleep. And the sheep just wandered off. Come on, play. <laughs> Look at how they follow. Look at how they're being led. They're following. The, this, is, this is what we do. Once we have a good leader, we start to follow. We start to listen. And we have good leaders. We have Bishop Nathaniel, Bishop Yawasak, Bishop Kanai, the deacons, the captains. They are our examples of good shepherds, the officers. We're learning to be good shepherds. The soldiers, y'all should be also learning to be what? Good shepherds and not hirelings. You shouldn't be look, learning how to forget about the sheep. Not learning. You shouldn't be learning how to not tend to the sheep properly. How to feed them. How to care for them. Play. How long is this video? All right, we can drop that. So that's that's the visual of what 3,000 souls could look like and the, and the amount of work it takes to take care of that many sheep. Um, so it says, but we must be of a ready mind. These sheep in particular are sick, as we saw from the different images that we put up there, and broken. And this is why, Hosea 4 and 6. The book of Hosea, chapter 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. It says God's sheep, his people, are destroyed because they lack the knowledge of God. Come on. Because that has rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. And because we have rejected God's knowledge, the Lord has rejected us for a moment. Read. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. Come on. I will also forget thy children. Read on. Yes, read on. We're going to read down to verse 9. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. And this is why we became lost sheep. We went astray. We sinned against our God. Read. They ate up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their doings. All right, and we were rewarded. We were placed into captivity for our doings. Uh, when we read the book of Luke, let's read it again. Luke 18, uh, 4, 18. Let's read that quickly. The book of Luke, chapter 4, and and verse, verse 18. 18. 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Come on. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Our job as shepherds is to heal the brokenhearted. Read. To preach deliverance to the captives. To preach deliverance to those that are captive. We are being held captive in the four corners of this earth. Captive in doctrines. Captive um, serving other nations. Captive to Christianity. We are being held captive. We must preach deliverance to these people, to these sheep. Read. And recovering of sight to the blind. Come on. To set at liberty them that are bruised. It says to set at liberty them that are bruised. How did we get bruised? Isaiah 53 and 6. This is how we became bruised. The book of Isaiah, chapter 56. Um, 53 and verse 6. Chapter 53 and verse 6. All we like sheep have, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. We have turned to our own ways. Read. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. So the Lord took on, Christ died to take on the iniquity that we went astray. That's the job of a shepherd. That's why he is the chief shepherd. Come on, Baruch. Drop that, Baruch 425. This is how we have went astray. And you're going to read down to 28. The book of Baruch, chapter 4, and verse 25. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon, that has come upon you from God. Take your time. Read it again. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that is come that is come that is come upon you from God. So the Lord places us into captivity for breaking his commandments. And he says, Suffer patiently the wrath that is come upon you from God. Read. For thy enemy hath persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see the destruction. And shall tread upon his neck. And the enemy, they have, they have, and they still are persecuting us. But it says that their end shall come shortly. Read. My delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as flock caught of the enemy. It says we were taken away as sheep. Read. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto God. For he shall be remembered of him that, that brought these things upon you. Come on, what verse is that? Verse 28 right now. That was verse 27. Read. Verse 28. For, for as it was your mind to go astray from God, so being returned, seek him ten times more. So we must seek the Lord ten times more. Why? We went astray. We went astray and we got caught up. In our sins, and we got bruised. Christmas has bruised our minds. All the different pagan customs, these things are idolatry, and they have bruised the minds of our people. Um, so the question is, as they return, who is going to watch over them? Uh, Jeremiah 3.15. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, and verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Is that it? Yes, sir. So the Lord said that he will give us pastors according to his heart that will feed us with the knowledge and understanding of the scriptures. So let's go back to Second Peter 2. Let's read that again is it in, in its entirety. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 2, and verse 1 oh, Peter 5 and 2. 1 Peter 5 and 2? Yes, sir. Is that what, I, that's what we have? Yes, sir. The read. book of 1 Peter, chapter 5 and verse 2. Feed the flock of God, which is among you. Come on. Taking the oversight thereof. So we must take the oversight thereof. Um, before you read on, let's look up oversight. What does it mean to take the oversight thereof? 
What does that word mean, oversight? Because we're discussing the shepherd versus the hireling. Read that. Oversight. An unintentional failure to notice or do something. Go down, let me see. Looking at uh, Miriam. Yeah, let's read that. Oversight. A. Watchful and reasonable care. Responsible I mean, responsible care. care. All right. B. B. Regulatory supervision. So you're having supervision over God's flock. So what the, what's the similar words? Scroll down. Synonyms. Administration. So administration over the flock. Care. Charge. Direction. Governance. Government. Guidance. Handling. Management. That's why you see there's many operations within the sanctuary. Because we must have an oversight over God's heritage. Here's some other words. Handling, management, operation, running, stewardship. You see, keep, you see um, Bishop Yavasop keeps going over the stewardship program. Because shepherds have to have a stewardship program in place to watch over the sheep. So you can have an oversight to the things that the sheep need, the things that they need to um, care for them, to care for their bodies, to care for their spirit, to watch over their souls. Supervision. Let's go back to the scripture. So that's oversight. Read it again. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 2. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over, the, over God's heritage. No, it says not being lords over God's heritage. But being example to the flock. So the shepherd is an, an example to the flock. And when, the, when you have a good shepherd, the sheep what? Follows. The sheep follow because they trust the shepherd. They trust that that shepherd is going to guide them safely going in and going out. It's a, it's a big task. And if you are a hireling, the sheep will know. Uh, we, they, we got a video for the hireling that we're going to play at the end. Uh, read on. Verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear... You shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Um, bring up those images I told you about, about the different, um, how our, sh our shepherds are going out there to gather the sheep. You know what I'm talking about? Let's bring those up. Let's read that scripture again. This is Bishop Nathaniel. He's doing what? First He's Peter. bringing the bringing the word of God to his sheep. Read it again. First Let's Peter cycle through those images. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 2. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Come on. Taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. But willingly, read. Not for filthy lucre. Not for money. But of a ready mind. I'm, wait, I know we got more. Oh, okay. Come on, you guys, cycle through. We should have a lot of videos. But before what? But of a ready mind. Read. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. But now you look at these images, look at the shepherds, and look at the sheep. Look at the sheep. They're listening for guidance. They're what? This is, go back to that other image. When it says, heal the brokenhearted. Those that are captive, those that have been bruised, they're bringing solutions to the sheep. What got them in this predicament as lost sheep? Come on. Verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, 
Ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Read on. Likewise, ye younger. All right, you can drop that. So it says that it says that you will receive a crown that will not fade away. Um, let's get Jeremiah twenty three and one, because I keep saying that there is a judgment for not taking care of the sheep, or leading the sheep, or causing the sheep to scatter, and oftentimes we read this for pastors. But this is also for us. If we do things to harm the sheep, we have to be held accountable for that. Read. Jeremiah 23 and verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, Come on. saith the Lord. Read. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away. We are not supposed to drive them away. We are supposed to bring them into a safe pasture, a place where they can come, learn, a place of safety. But you, the shepherd, must be here to have an oversight of this sheep. Come on. And have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather the, re the remnant of my flock out of all countries where I have driven them. And those pictures that we cycle through, let's look at them again. Those pictures that we are looking at is the true shepherds that are going out there to gather his sheep. Read it again, verse 3. Verse 3. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries where I have driven them. And that's what you see the bishops and the deacons and the captains are doing. The shepherds are going out there to gather God's heritage, to gather his flock, to gather his sheep. Come on. And I will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds and over I will them. And do what? And I will set up shepherds over them. He said, and I will set up shepherds over them. To do what? Which shall feed them, and they shall feel no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall be shall neither shall there be lacking, saith the Lord. Neither shall there be what? Lacking, saith the Lord. And it said, neither shall there be lacking, um, any more. Um, let's go to John chapter ten. I want you to start at verse 7. John 10, verse 7. The book of John, chapter 10, and verse 7. Are you going to read down to verse 14? Yes, sir. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. They said they that came before him are thieves and robbers. Read. But the sheep did not hear them. Come on. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. And find pasture. Come on, read. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. The thief, which is Rome, Edom, they came and they came to destroy God's sheep. Come on. I am come that they might have life. And the Lord sent his son that we might have life. That he might what? Gather his sheep. Come on. And that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. Christ is the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. And Christ gave his life for the sheep. Now we must look at that. And learn from it. We also must want to give our life for the sheep. Mean that we go the extra mile. We up late. We put the extra effort. We don't constantly keep saying, hey, I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm. That's becoming a trend now. For, for the slightest thing, we are sick. We go home and sleep. And leave the sheep unattended. Come on, read. 
Verse 12. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd. But you that are an hireling and not the shepherd. Whose own the sheep are not. Because see, these sheep don't belong to you. Read. See the wolf coming and leave it the sheep and you flee You see the danger out there and say, ah, I'll go home and sleep, man. I'm tired. If they get killed, they get killed. Read. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. And the wolf scattereth the sheep. Come on. Verse 13. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling. The hireling will flee because he is an hireling. This doesn't mean anything to you. It's temporary. You don't see the purpose. You don't see the great work that is, that is needed to be done. You don't want that crown when the good shepherd appears and see, man, you have taken care of my sheep. Read. And care it not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and, not, and know my sheep. And, and I am no. Let me read that again. Verse 14. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I am known of mine. So, Israel, we're going to play this last video right here. This is, this is the reward of a hireling. Let's play that. That can't be the beginning. Is that the beginning? Bam. This is a hireling. Look up, look up. Damn. This is a hireling. You want to neglect the sheep? The sheep going to know. Play it back. I like, I like this. I play this clip about eight times today, man. Hey, pause it. Put this pause it. This is the hireling. I'm sick. I don't feel well. You know what? I'm going to go home and leave you sheep out here. The sheep said, all right, we got you. Play. Bam. Take your ass home. Bam. Stay down. Oh, you, oh, you want to kick? Oh, he start to kick the sheep. Watch. Bam. Stay down. So, Israel, Lord's will, you all got something out of this. Um, I pray you all understand why, how we went about it. We are supposed, we as men, are supposed to be shepherds. And not just any type of shepherd, good shepherds. And with that, we say shalom. <laughs>